All right, so here's the 4.6 out of the Grand Marquis. to deal with uh, my local junkyard. I'm gonna trade him this motor and uh, some cash for a uh, Lincoln Navigator engine. So it'll, I'll get the 5.4 uh, dual cams, but the 5.4 is even more torquey. And you get the forged crankshaft right off the bat, which the next option would be like a Cobra engine and those are way, way more money. I still gotta go back to the yard and get the junkyard and get some more parts. They uh, lost a whole bunch of parts to this for some reason, like the coil packs and the manifolds, kind of ordeal, but I'm gonna probably pull all that stuff off of Mark 8. Can I really think I wanna use this intake because I just wanna drive, you know, I like the idea of just driving torque like crazy. Um, otherwise, they make adapter plates where you get an adapter for this and then you can bolt uh, basically any Coyote 5.0 uh, intake manifold on here, which would probably def I got to do some measurements, but I doubt it comes up, you know, much higher than the bottom of this. I see a lot of guys uh, run these probably because it's, you know, it sticks up so tall, it's ridiculous. There's some question about how good this motor is still. Um, so I've just been uh, double checking everything. The timing chain isn't holding tension on one side, so it could just be, you know, there's no oil pressure. Um, but I'm going to go double check all the timing, kind of a jerry-rigged uh, leak down test on it and uh, some other things just to see what's going on. The one other mechanic that had known about this engine had said that it had a dead cylinder and sure enough, uh, these two uh, rear cylinders are dead. They're, uh, when you hook it up to air on um, top dead center, it just blows out through the exhaust. So. I got two dead cylinders leaking out of the exhaust and when they replaced the guys they didn't even take the pan off to you know check for all this broken material but it's sad when people are selling you good engines when they don't even take the proper procedures to you know clean them up all right so this is the navigator engine from the junkyard both exhaust valves were leaking this one, the seat on the exhaust valve was uh, completely shot with a burnt valve, and this one just had a burnt valve. So, yeah, it wasn't holding compression. There's no way I'm going to run it like that. Uh, so it needed a new cylinder head or serviced. It would have been cheaper to buy a cylinder head for like 100, 120 bucks. I could get a used one off eBay. The um, 150 from the junkyard. I was just done with the junkyard, so... Um, this kind of this whole process irritated me so they gave me my money back um, we ended up trading engines still which isn't a horrible deal but you know still not the best we're probably looking at about the same because uh, you know even for parts this is probably worth three four hundred bucks to someone especially if they were just gonna rebuild the whole thing anyways but yeah either way I was looking at getting a new cylinder head and then I needed some uh, timing stuff, all new gasket set. And then still I needed to make sure that the new cylinder head that came had a good surface and was going to meet up. And I needed some, you know, tools for that to check it. So I was looking at a minimum of like $400 to put a new cylinder head on here and uh, get it going. And then it was still a risk because, I mean, I haven't ran this engine. So what's to say that there's not something else? Like I still needed to check all the bearings. And the yeah, when I made the deal with the junkyard too, I was supposed to get the wire harness, oil packs, exhaust, um, basically everything, throttle cable, stuff like that. So I was able to go back to the junkyard. I got coil packs, these covers and stuff off of Mark 8, pretty much spot on. So they'll work. Now for the risk of $400 to fix this right now, because I just need to get this thing running. I don't, it doesn't need to be perfect, but $400 and then there could still be potential issues like it was overheated and some sort of knock or something. Uh, it makes more sense to just buy another running navigator that I can get all the other parts I need, like the wire harness, and then this will just be a backup. I could rebuild this one later. What's cool too is I'll have uh, two intake manifolds. So I can try running one stock and then I can maybe like, you know, hack this one up or use the bottom half and build uh, some sort of intake. Like I said with two of them now I can use this one and experiment, do whatever I want. Still got to go back and get uh, the exhaust manifolds. I got them halfway off of one of the cars there, but it was just a pain in the ass. So I got to go back another day and finish that. So basically this motor now I'm into just trading for the two valve. So I basically traded a, a decent two valve for... Uh, 
shitty four valve. But I think long term this will work out. So, all right, I went ahead and uh, took the cylinder off again real quick so you guys could uh, see the valves like I was talking about. The, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but there's still a crosshatch pattern in here. Might be a little hard to see. Cylinder walls don't look too bad. I mean, it's kind of crummy. But uh, the bottom end is probably still good. I'm guessing uh, it either overheated or valve stems were leaking and caused, you know, valves to get hot and burn up or whatever. And when I got this engine from them, they told me it was perfect and that they had replaced the timing chain guides right here. And so once I heard they replaced the timing chain guides, I had asked them a whole bunch of questions and they were getting like defensive of like how dare I question their mechanic and the engine's perfect. And sure enough, you know, they never did a compression check on it. So yeah, I could probably use these on the other engine for now. You know, I was trying to find top dead center, so I'd stick my finger in there till I could feel the compression stroke. Then I was just doing a jerry-rigged like leak down test, running uh, compressed air into it. When I did these two cylinders back here, it literally, uh, I couldn't feel it compress uh, the air at all. I did the leak down test and I realized the air is coming out of the exhaust. And then, yeah, once I took it apart, I was hoping for just burnt valves, but then once the seat, the seat's bad in this, it needs the machine work. It has to have the machine work. So basically when I get the engine from the junkyard, they tell me everything's good. Um, they just replaced the timing chain guides and you know, the engine's great. Um, no question in the quality of the engine whatsoever. So I take the engine, they tell me for the exhaust manifold, the wiring, all the other parts, coil packs, that's down at a local garage. So I go to the garage to pick up those parts and then there's a mechanic there and he says that he remembers this engine, they gave it to him as a core to put in a customer's car, and he says it has a dead cylinder on it. When I get it home, that's why I said, you know, there's a question to, because the junkyard told me it was perfect, I, and then I talked to a guy that actually was working on this engine, and then it was returned back to the junkyard, and then that's where I seen it sitting in the yard, and I asked about it, and uh, that's how I got it. So. They knew they must have known at the junkyard because it was returned back to them. Yeah, so I went back to the junkyard and I told him, hey, you know, the two cylinders are leaking. And he didn't. And I told him, you know, they must have burnt valves because it's leaking out of the exhaust. And uh, he didn't know what to think. So he said, you know what, just we agreed to take the cylinder head off and then we can know for sure. And when I brought it back into him, he was kind of speechless. So yeah, you can see how that valve's all burnt. The seat for this is all chipped away. Yeah, you can see where it's shiny behind it. It's all chipped away. And then down here, that bottom uh, exhaust valve's burnt also. See, that's what it's supposed to look like, and then it's got a hole in it. So, and you can see the oil deposits. Oh, okay, there you can see the oil deposits on top. So, I mean, this thing was like leaking uh, oil down into the cylinder through the valve uh, guide seals, valve guides and seals, and it probably, you know, allowed the valves to burn up. This other one's not as dirty. Well, looking at it now, it looks kind of, that guide looks kind of wrecked. I wonder what that's about. So those are good ones. If I was just gonna replace the valves, I was like, you know what? Let's rip the valve out, shove a valve in it, just get it working, you know, enough to get the car running. Um, but it needing a new valve seat is a whole nother story. So that's why I decided, you know, it was gonna be $400 for, to put a new cylinder head on this, or, you know, just spend the money and get a running engine. So searching like crazy, trying to make a deal with someone on one of these navigators at a Halfway decent price. Finally got one yesterday. Mechanically a pretty decent truck. All the body panels are, you know, pretty good. The interior is pretty shot. You know, it's not horrible, but it's just real messy. I'm going to be able to use a lot of this stuff for my truck. Uh, this came, I didn't know this, but it came with a limited slip from the factory, according to the paperwork. Got like really new tires on it. So these tires are going to go on another car around here. Probably going to sell these wheels. These were upgraded wheels too. Has a CD changer. 
from the factory, which was like a $600 upgrade. You know, take the wiring and the CD changer out of this one and put it in the truck. 9.75 axle stock rear, and my truck uh, from the factory came with that, so I should be able to take the limited slip out of this. Should have the same front axle. So a lot of the brake and suspension parts I might save for my truck. You know, sell all the body panels, any salvageable interior pieces, sell all the airbag suspension stuff, um, and then keep this engine. So it runs pretty good. This one has the Intec uh, nameplate on it. So it's cool, I got the two options now. I can run either nameplate. It was a pretty clean engine. Supposedly, the guy I got it from, his aunt owned it, and she has 18 years of service records for it. And it still had the window sticker in the in the truck. Yeah, here's a look at the window sticker that was in the truck. You know, 300 horsepower, 5.4, four valve. Standard equipment, no extra charge. 373 limited slip. The CD changer was extra, 595. Yeah, I just gotta rip this thing out and then I'll just part, uh, like I said, I'll keep whatever parts I need and then I'll part out the rest and uh, recoup my money on this engine. So I spent about 800 for it. You know, wheels and tires, tires are really good. That's probably two to $400 to the right person. Um, catalytic converters right off the bat, two, 300 bucks, selling for scrap. Odds and ends of stuff. So basically once I'm done ripping this apart, I'll get the motor for free. And if not, I'll, I'll even make some money. So, and like I said, now with the other motor, I got two intakes. So I, this one's perfect and I'll use the other one to chop up. Um, I'm going to use this radiator because I got the other Lincoln Navigator radiator from the junkyard too. So I got two of these radiators now. This came with the mechanical fan. I don't want to use the mechanical fan because that could be robbing easily 20 horsepower. Seeing this is engines rated at 300 horsepower with a mechanical fan and single exhaust where like say the two valve we had and it was rated at 240 horsepower in the Mercury Marquis and that was with an electric fan and dual exhaust. So, you know, theoretically once we get the fan off and the dual exhaust, you know, it's easily going to pump out another, well, like 30 horsepower, maybe. Open up, yeah, especially you open up the breather too. It's uh, sat overnight now, it's completely cold. Yesterday when I picked it up when I started it the guy didn't even have a park 10 minutes and I started it and uh, You could hear the you know timing belt click on startup So it probably needs a new tensioner uh, Maybe some guides which the other engine had uh, brand new guides in it so I can use those yesterday I started it a few times and it never clicked again, so I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, it does it every once in a while But once it's out I could easily you know check all that stuff out but here, we'll hear it start from a cold start. See if it clicks. Yeah, it rattled. It did have a little sustained rattle on startup. Simple uh, timing chain stuff. So we'll look at all that when it's apart. But it's not throwing any check engine lights, which is good. Oh, no burnt valves, at least. This thing's pretty cool, though, but you can feel the weight. Um, this thing probably weighs four or 500 pounds more uh, than my truck. Truck weighs about 55. And this could weigh as much as 6,000 pounds, 59. So the truck, the Navigator probably weighs four or 500 pounds more than the truck and you actually feel it. Uh, this engine pushes this thing around really good, honestly, for almost weighing, the four wheel drive version, almost weighing like 5,900, 6,000 pounds. But my truck actually feels spunkier. So it, it, I guess it shows you the difference in uh, what that 500 pounds makes. So this uh, on highway speeds, I think would uh, eat the truck up with the four valve because I was driving home yesterday. I think once my truck hits about 80 or 90, it's kind of dead. Um, this thing seemed like at 80 or 90, it was still trying to like, you know, pull pretty good. That's basically warmed up. Give it a little. definitely scoots for how heavy it is for 
you know, you put this in a 4,000 pound car, which is still heavy, that's 2,000 pounds lighter than this, and uh, th this motor's gonna rip it. Yeah, I mean, again, it's kind of a shame to take this apart. Honestly, right now, the price to parts ratio, uh, it, th it makes sense, so I can get this engine because everyone's selling these engines for $800, it seems like. Sure, there's better deals everywhere, but for the time frame I'm in, uh, this is like the best I could find. Except once I'm done selling parts, I'll basically get the engine for free. I'll get tons of parts uh, for my truck right there. Like the limited slip, that'll be really cool. All the four-wheel drive and heater parts I might need. Yeah, I was planning on using the 4.62 valve engine. And what I was going to do was go get like an 01 F-150 uh, truck intake manifold. Because um, I really wanted to drive the torque and I really wanted the center throttle body. Because if I do uh, dual turbochargers, you know, they can, it'll go in and look symmetrical and, you know, the engine will work kind of symmetrical. Rather than having the throttle body that sticks off the right or the left like the Mustangs and the Crown Vicks. So I was saving up money to go buy a parts truck because the junkyard wanted $200 or 175 for the intake plus wiring and everything, which I thought was ridiculous. I was saving up to go get a parts truck for the intake manifold and then I realized like, you know, if I'm gonna buy this F-150 parts truck, I might as well just go the extra mile and uh, get the navigator with the dual cam engine. And then in doing research, um, you know, I learned more about the intake manifold. I seen that it was actually all metal so that right there made it better than the F-150 because the F-150 still has the plastic bottom. So this is literally, uh, out of everything, probably the best I could have done for what I want to do because I wanted to use a stock intake manifold to keep it cheaper. Um, and I get the forward-facing center uh, throttle body with an all-metal intake on a dual cam. Uh, Plus I really wanted to drive torque. And then it has this variable uh, plenum right here with a valve and I'll talk about that more on the computer but what this does is it opens at uh, keeps it closed in low RPM and opens it in a higher RPM and then it broadens the torque curve and it uh, creates more torque uh, for the engine. Plus it just looks badass. Alright so this took me a while of digging but I actually found this article on uh, FordTrucks.com, specs in the Lincoln Blackwood uh, section. And the Lincoln Blackwood and the Navigator um, basically share the same engine. You know, 300 horsepower, 355 foot-pounds of torque, same 5.4 dual cam, and then, you know, same exact intake manifold. And you see right here, so 350, it has peak torque, 355, at 2700 rpm and then 300 horsepower at 5000 rpm see this is the interesting part though is fully fully 90 percent of peak torque is available from 1750 to 4700 rpm so theoretically between that it like never goes below like i don't know say 320 um torque and it's because of that uh flapper valve right there that causes the dual plenum in the intake so this is an extremely torquey setup with this intake manifold. And in some of the people I see run these intake manifolds and swaps, they don't, they just wire this open. And in the other thing I'm about to show you where they did an intake manifold shootout, they wired it open too and didn't take advantage of all the low uh, torque that this manifold can produce. So again, like I said, I get the full metal intake manifold, forward-facing throttle body, and a huge uh, torque curve. So, now if you search like 5.4 intake manifold test, uh, you'll find this. This is on Mustangs and Fast Forwards, and it's a whole article where they did a shootout. So you can go read that of all different types of intake manifolds. They ran it previously to like a thousand horsepower um, on turbos and then after that test then they put um, regular intakes on it or different ones and then run it uh, naturally aspirated which theoretically too you know the cams in this are set up to be ran with a turbo so it's not going to be the best for naturally aspirated but it does give you an idea the stock navigator intake manifold 
see if they have a picture. The same intake manifold. And they um, wire, you know, there's the flapper valve right there for the dual plenum. They say in the article somewhere that they wired it open. So here's the test on the race engine. But see, they don't reach their peak torque till about 4,000 RPM. And theoretically, that intake manifold was designed to keep a torque peak all right here. So they're not they're not factoring for that. And again, right here. So if you would have had a higher torque rating, your horsepower would have been higher. And theoretically, too, this would all be at a higher spectrum because instead of it having to play catch up now, right here, it would have already been higher and it could have maybe made, you know, had a little more momentum to catch uh, some horsepower and a higher RPM. So again, it doesn't fall off too bad right here once you start getting to the higher RPMs. And even a lot of these 5.4s race motors, they only go to uh, 7,000. So that's about 7,000 right here at the end. So, and again, this is naturally aspirated where if you throw a turbo or some sort of forced induction on here, it's going to lift up this whole uh, band to a higher RPM. So it could potentially this intake manifold could be just fine um, with once there's a power adder to that RPM limit, as long as you're saying say under 7,000 RPM on the 5.4. If this was a 4.6 and you're trying to rev it to you know eight, ten thousand, this is a whole different story. But the fact that we're staying under 7,000 RPM and doing turbos, this intake manifold might actually be better than a lot of the aftermarket ones. Or, you know, can at least run with a lot of them, especially for the price point. I mean, you're going to get it with the engine if you buy it used. So Here, Now, this is uh, the CarCraft intake. So, this is the Navigator right here. So, it's already killing it out of torque. And you got to think, realistically, it's up here. Same right here. It killed it with horsepower. The CarCraft, you know, took it a little bit on top of horsepower up here. And again, theoretically, if this maybe was optimized to where it had had a head start on its torque and uh, horsepower, maybe it could have lifted it up just a little bit more. But you you can see this does climb better once you get past, uh, you know, 55, 6,000 uh, RPM. But we're talking about a difference of, well, like 25 or 40 horsepower. Where so you lose, you know, 25 horsepower, but you're gaining like 100 foot pounds of torque. Like between three and, uh, or between like 1700, because it, remember the previous article said it's 1750, it has 90% of its torque to about 4,000. So there's tons of torque left on the table. And here's the Sullivan, like the torque. Again, way low. Realistically, the torque should be up here with the navigator. So it's way low. And then horsepower. Um, you see the, navigate, uh, the navigator is in lead until we get to 55, 65, 7,000 RPM right about here. So yeah, it's killing it at about 65, 7,000. But again... What if we did this test with a turbocharger? How much more is it going to boost up uh, this torque curve or the horsepower curve? So again, are you paying $700 for intake manifold that has, you know, no torque and just a little bit more horsepower? Again, nat naturally aspirated. Um, it's one thing, but the fact that we're going turbocharger and it really doesn't drop off too bad. So this does have more torque than the uh, car craft. But again, we're looking at a 60 foot pounds of torque, if not more right off the bat increase with the stock navigator and losing about 50. So what you gain in torque, you lose in horsepower up here. But again, is it gonna be able to crank air through that better once there's a turbocharger? Okay, here's the Boss 290, which is the Australian 5.4 four valve that came in the Falcons, the Boss 290 intake, um, which is a pretty good intake, but again, it's expensive. So it leaves a lot of torque, again, off the table. 
uh, it picks up the horsepower pretty quick and it actually, uh, you know, maintains it pretty good. It's got kind of the same curve a little bit, just with a little higher lift. But again, this is going to, the navigator is going to kill it on torque right here when used correctly. And how much more is this going to outperform once you get a uh, natural? And the whole reason to have the 5.4 is because you want the extra torque. Your more focus is on torque than RPM. Um, now here's the dual plenum. They do a dual plenum in the article, which is custom. Let's see if there's a, there's the dual plenum. Custom dual throttle body, dual plenum. Now this one does, you know, pick up uh, a peaker torque um, kind of quick. The, again, navigator would probably be about right here ish. And then this one does substantially, you know, gain horsepower by, let's say, four, you know, another 50 at peak or, you know, 40 at peak. But again, it maintains the same curve. So if we're going um, with the boosted application, then it's might maintain the same curve and we you know just put another couple pounds of boost in it and it's this is going to run about the same but you're going to have all this torque down low and again this is you know open to interpretation because like i said they did this test without the valve which kind of threw me off there is a you know that's substantial 50 horsepower is nothing to turn your head at but this is a full custom intake manifold with dual throttle bodies um, the Boss 90 intakes I heard are not cheap or easy to come by. The car, that's a car craft. The car craft and uh, Sullivan intake, you know, those aren't cheap either. So, you know, we're doing this on, you know, a budget. And I think this thing is uh, going to kick ass, especially for, you know, we're not going over 7,000 RPM. And we can just drive torque. Like This thing drives torque better than all the other intake manifolds and under boosted application should be able to keep up uh, up to 7,000 RPM in my opinion because it doesn't drop off and go back up to it. It doesn't drop off horribly and more plateaus. See, it's making it to 7,000 basically without, it's starting to drop off right there, you can see. So it's making a 7,000 without dropping off too bad. So theoretically under a boosted application, it should be able to at least plateau all the way through 7,000 and not drop off. Um, so it should get the job done, especially on a budget, not having to go out and spend somewhere between 500 and $1,000 on an intake manifold. And the torque will help with a turbo spool if uh, that's an issue. So all that extra torque is going to help drive that uh, turbo until it kicks in, and then the turbo is going to help drive that higher RPM horsepower. So it's a good performing intake manifold. It's all aluminum and I'm getting the forward facing throttle body like I want so I really I think this is what I'm gonna do it's gonna you know it's probably gonna stick up through the hood kind of stupid but I think for the money and the function I, I don't really see a better deal for me right now so that was another factor into things too that um, the t56 transmission is not really a good rpm transmission per se so even with that, we're going to want to stop around the 7,000 mark. And so, you know, it's the whole idea is I like get everything working together in unison. So we, we got an engine and transmission that, you know, want to work together. And then let's get the intake manifold that just, or keep, in this case, keep the intake manifold that's going to really give us what we want. Because we're not, we just really want to push torque and we can't. We don't want to really push too much RPM. So. If you guys could maybe go subscribe. I just got over 100 subscribers. Throw some likes on stuff, anything. I'd really appreciate it. All right, you guys have a good day. Later.